to get us started, make a new file, save as S-T-R-I-S-K-M-A-I-N for strisk main, because this is where that main is going to go. And try to make sure that's in, in its own file uh, folder. Because when this lab, we're going to be putting our functions into a few different files, and probably one of the best ways to organize your code. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be one function per file, but it might be, you know, maybe one or two per file. Really just the better that we can categorize this, the easier it's going to be to code it and to look back through and maintain it. So let's go and begin. We are doing the classic strategy game, Strisk. And right here is where the whole program is going to begin. So according to our design document, or our mo basically a design document, um, Strisk is going to start off with a welcome message. So let's go and put that in there. This, goes, of course, goes into main because this is what shows up when we first open it. And I'm just going to give a little hello here. Welcome to the strategy game Strisk. There we go. Save that. Again, make sure this is in Strisk main. No spaces. All right, we've already cleared the first part. And let's go ahead and test it. Run that code. Hey, look. It worked. Isn't that something? Now you might be saying that, well, yeah, of course, we, it's only a print statement, we expect that to work. Well, that's the thing. But we're going to be doing more than just uh, one print statement, so let's get into the habit of uh, testing our code each time we add something. Remember that this is a part of our incremental development. All right, so we got that first part, it works fine, works as expected. Next, let's ask the player for their name and set any resources. So hopefully that's pretty easy to you at this point. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some special things right here. And let's explain what these are. So I've just highlighted four characters on the screen. At the end of my import statement, uh, input statement, I put a backslash, which is probably the slash underneath your backspace. If it's not, you just need to simply to find the slash on your keyboard that where the top part is facing backwards, you know, where this is a backslash and this is a forward slash, backslash, forward slash. But anyway, so I have this backslash and then an N and then a backslash and then a T. And what happens there is this. See where my input is now? Ask for a name and we write it all the way down here. What these are, they are called escape sequences. Escape sequences are where you, uh, you use one of these backslashes and then a character of some sort, and it prints out something special. In this case, backslash n prints out a new line. So that way, when it asks for the input, if I have to remove these, it doesn't just do it right there. It'll put it on the next line right there, which looks a little cleaner than just putting it right next to it. Furthermore, I also like to throw in a backslash T for a tab so that it's there. I like this because when we get to several lines of output on the screen, it starts to make it pretty clear where the user's been typing and saves us from just one continuous block of text. You can also do things like only have the backslash T, and again, I'll just put it over there. You know, depends on what you want to make it look like. Backslash in, backslash t is my preferred style for all input statements. So we've tested that a few different ways. We've gotten an idea of what we want it to look like. Can fill it out, looks fine. Let's go and get the resources set. So, hmm. now the first thing when we see this instruction is, we'll hang on there, what resources? Well, the resources in this buy and sell game are money and widgets. Okay, so that tells us something. Furthermore, widgets are sold for money and bought for money. Okay, so this sentence, while it seems kind of pointless, is really more there to say widgets are only sold for money and only bought for money. It tells you there isn't really any other way of doing it right now. 
Furthermore, burned money is put in the currency of Strill Points. And then the player starts with 100 of Strill Points and 0 widgets. Okay. So all this tells me the context of how these resources are going to be used, what the resources are called, and how much to give. So let's go ahead and start that off. Money equals 100. Widgets equals 0. All right, cool. And let's just test that. It Make sure it works. It runs. It works OK. No problems in this part of the code. Um, Let's go ahead and get to our next part. Okay. Main menu should always display totals of resources and ask for a choice of buy, sell, or quit. All right, so here we reach our first point where we need to realize that we should have a function here. I'll tell you why. Functions are repeatable segments of code. And that's what a main menu is. It keeps returning to this one menu, right? So that's our one repeatable segment. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm going to go down here. DEF main menu. And since it's going to display the totals of the resources, let's go ahead and put in variables for those resources right there. So those are variables are as parameters. We will display the resources. So we'll say something like, um, you have that many stroke points and that many widgets. All right, and then we'll go back down here. We'll add in an extra welcome thing. Welcome, and using their name. And then let's start main menu up, because we really only need to welcome them that one time. We'll call main menu right here. And if you have what I have, you're going to notice that it doesn't run. Let's go ahead and test it, because we just added in a few, we just added in four lines. So, you know, whereas we started by adding one line and then another line, and then we added in two lines and tested it. Now we're adding four lines and testing. Ooh, look, we're testing more and more each time. Anyways, run the module. Ask for a name, give it a name, and it crashes. Scroll back up, let's take a look at it. All right, so it seems to have no problem doing these three lines because, you know, we, we get to that welcome statement. But then, when it got to the point where it said to call main menu, it says main menu is not defined. Which is weird, because main menu is down here, right? But here's the thing. Main menu is not defined on this line right there. And that's a, that's a problem. Now, some of you have been trying to get around that by putting this line down there. And then a lot of others of you have been doing what I said to do, which is to take the whole of main and put it below the function. Others of you have forgotten and are getting confused. Now is the time where we're going to learn the best way of doing this. The best way of doing this is not to, you know, place lines all around the place and get all things confused, because right then you have this statement here in the middle of, you know, everything else going on, and it's not even sequentially lined up. If you were to read this program, you would think that this comes next, you know, that this part happens right after this, but it's not true. It happens after this. And if we had other things going on in here, you might be confused as to why your main menu isn't running. There are a lot of different reasons for why we're going to do what we're about to do next. And we'll see them as we go through. So go ahead and take this function definition, cut it, reorganize main so it's nice and pretty, file, new file, I'm going to resize this so it's just right over here. Paste that function definition in there. Call it strisk menu. No spaces. All right. Now, if you try to run it at this point, it still will not run. It's still going to say it can't find main menu. 
What we have to do is what's called an import statement. Let's go to the top line of our file. Now you will see quite a few what are called import statements. This one is going to be your first, unless you've already done it before. Your first one is going to actually start with the word from, because we want to identify what file we're going to be using. So we say from strisk menu, which is the name of our other file right here, strisk menu, from strisk menu, import everything. Remember that asterisk is called the wildcard, and that means it is everything. So from strisk menu, import all of the functions. That's what we mean when we say import everything, all of the functions. So inside strisk menu is the main menu function. Inside strisk main is the main menu, menu call. Let's go ahead and run that. Ask for a name. I'll do name this time just so it looks very clear where everything is. And there we are. We finally get to see our main menu. At this point, we know main is finished. Main menu has just begun. We know exactly where we're supposed to be, and we know that everything so far works. We also know, based on our input, that we like how this looks. Hopefully. If you don't like how your text, uh, your output file uh, looks, then you can go ahead and make some changes to the formatting. But at least now you can see it as you're going through. So let's go on. All right, main menu, displays tools and resources, we did that. And then also ask for buy, sell, or quit. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write SEL as a new variable, and that's just short for selection. Selection equals input. Do you want to buy, sell, or quit? And I'm going to do the backslash n backslash t again. So that way, let's test our code. Comes out, what is your name? Strick. Ask me what I want to do, I want to buy, there we are. And we can continue to see how our program is going to look. And again, this is what I'm talking about. I like having these two indented because they're more important. You know, what the user says is more important. Um, meanwhile, the rest of this goes back here. It might be a text game, but that's no reason to not make it look good. Or at least make it look, by, look good by your definition of looking good. You might not think this looks very great. I like this. Uh, version, you can have your own version. Just make sure that your choices are deliberate. You know, you're doing what you actually want to do with coding. Anyways, moving on. So we get the selection, but we haven't done anything with it. So let's go ahead and test it. Now, before we go into testing it, let's do something kind of intelligent. We are going to do SEL equals SEL dot lower. And then when we compare SEL with the choice, we'll make sure it's with lowercase options. This is so that way, whatever capitalization the user uses, it will be negated and then checked against the lowercase version so we don't have a case where they say something like buy or buy or buy or, you know, anything like that. Um, and then it wouldn't recognize them as saying buy. Let's go ahead and just make it as easy as possible to use the program. All right, so if they say buy, we'll do something with that. We'll just say handle buying L if cell equals cell handle selling and then we'll just say else for quitting game and notice how since the else doesn't require any kind of if statement with it um, I'm putting in a comment there just to go ahead and make sure that I know what this one line does. I mean, fair enough, there's only three of them, so I, I can probably guess. But I hope you get the idea that for any significantly large project, you want to use these things, just because it makes it easier to know what's happening and when. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, if I were to try and run this, you'll notice it won't work. That's because there needs to be something that isn't a comment underneath this. 
So we'll go ahead and add in something here. It says to, uh, to do all these little things. I see something we can do here. Now, where the rest of this, I'm actually going to put into another function. This part about asking for a quantity, I'm actually going to put up here. So handle the buying. I can remove that now. I'll say ask for a quantity or just quan for the, um, the variable. Quan equals float input. And actually, instead of float, why don't we start using int for integer? Remember that when we do things like find the surface area of a cone incorrectly, we want to know a decimal number, right? We want to be able to handle decimal numbers. But when we want a finite, a very, very finite number of things, integer, a whole number, is probably the best option. So we'll do integer. So quantity is equal to the integer ver version of the input, which we're going to ask how many widgets do you want to buy? Backslash n, backslash t, close it up. There we go. We'll have a similar thing for selling. We'll just say, how many do you want to sell? Because both of these will have some kind of variable. Now understand this, um, each of these are making separate variables quan though at the end of the day we can still use that the same name. All right, lastly, for else, for putting the game, all you need there is a return statement, and I'll explain why. When you call main menu, you are simply calling it. You are not saving its value into any, any uh, variable, right? You're not returning from main menu some va value that you're then going to use, like with absolute value or with described number or with um, the word shifter or any of these other things. You aren't returning, so you don't need to save it into a variable. So here, when we return, we can just say return because we don't have to actually give any data back. However, when we do the return, it's going to exit this function and go back here. Now you might say, well, hang on there. Why, why do we need a return to exit the function? It's about to end right there. Well, that's where you're wrong, because we're going to do something else. The main menu repetitively shows, right? We're not just buying or selling once, and that's it. What we're going to do is we're going to go down here, backspace, 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 backspace. So that's in line with all the other lines. And we're going to say main menu, passing it M for money and W for widgets, calling the same name of the function we're in. All right, now we just put in a bunch of things, and let's, let's test that before we go any further. So we did this stuff. We had for buy and for sell and for quitting. So let's do it. Let's test out all that code. All right, our first error is right there. Probably because I'm missing a parentheses. So yeah, if you're following along very closely with me, you probably also had that issue. In which case, we had two opening parentheses, but only one closing, but now we have two. So make sure you get that added in. All right, I think we're ready. Hello, welcome to the Strategy Game Trisk. What is your name? Sure like us. Welcome to Strelikas. You have 100 Strel points and zero widgets. Do you want to buy, sell, or quit? All right, well, let's just start with buying. And I'm going to capitalize all of it just to really test out my lower function. How many widgets do you want to buy? Oh, okay. So right there, we said buy, so it asked, how many do you want to buy? Well, that's good so far. 100. All right. So we just did that. So we just did that. It didn't do sell because it didn't say sell and it didn't quit. So then it goes back down to main menu. The call again goes up to the top, calls back to main menu, and it says, all right, you have 100 show points and zero widgets because nothing's changed. We've just passed the same data back. You want to buy, sell, or quit? Uh, we'll say buy, but this time with just one capital letter. So, all right, so it still works. All right, let's try sell now. All right, and just if that seems to work, do it all lowercase, still works. 
50. All right. Lastly, we'll quit and we're done. So yeah, that is us having a working main method, a main menu met, uh, function, sorry. That is us having a working main menu function